in verse 18. Knowing that you were ransomed from the fertile ways, inherit it from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope or in God, and you may be seated. So my question, brothers and sisters, this morning is, is what is important to you? What, what are you chasing? Uh, many of us, I believe, are on the same journey. We have families, we have responsibilities, we have our goals, and we have our ambitions. Uh, we might be on different legs of the journey, but I think if, if we were being honest with one another that we would uh, find out that we have a lot in common. Uh, we have our future plans. Some of us have retirements we work for and investments. We have our businesses and, and our jobs. Um, we have so many things. Some chase bigger salaries, houses, possessions, success. Um, some just want to be relevant. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. Uh, we want this world or mankind uh, to find value in us. Why do you think social media is so, uh, so popular? Uh, we want to make something of ourselves. Uh, we want our talents to be known. I'm sure uh, many of us feel, uh, just if we were honest, that our opinions are important. Uh, just go hop on Facebook or, once again, social media, and you'll see everyone thinks that their opinions are important. I I'm guilty of this myself. Uh, if someone disagrees with us or takes offense with us, it really will put us in a head spin. How dare uh, they not think that my opinion um, isn't important? How dare they not see how valuable and how special I am? You know, we have our heroes. We have the uh, people we admire and idolize, uh, people we want to be like. Uh, just walk into Walmart on a Sunday evening and you'll see all the sports jerseys people are wearing. Um, as a kid, I always wanted to be a mix of Magnum P.I., John Wayne, and Wyatt Earp. Uh, look, look at music artists like Taylor Swift, um, who recently had 73,000 people at one of her concerts. It is the biggest recorded in history. Um, people literally lined up for miles to scream her name and sing her songs. Let me ask you guys a question, another question. Has anyone here ever heard of Cyrus the Great? How about uh, Ahsoka the Great? Or how about Tutmos the Third of Egypt? And w why am I bringing up these names? Well, what do these figures have in common? Well, they all took over and ruled most of the known civilized world during their day. And I don't, I, I truly mean this, they ruled the world. And that's why we talk about them so much today, right? I think if we were being honest, um, that was probably the first time you've ever heard of those people. I mean, they did such important things, right? They ruled the world. What if I was to tell you that the houses you've worked so hard for that one day someone else is going to live in them or some, it, they're going to get torn down one day or all the cars that you're driving and paying bills on will eventually end up in a junkyard, crushed or rusted away. That all your possessions that all your trophies you've earned and you've worked so hard for will go to someone else or just simply end up in the garbage. That if you live to an old age and die, it'll take about 40 years, I'm just being honest, it'll take about 40 years for most people, if even that long, to forget you ever existed. That most people don't even know their great-grandfather's name off the top of their heads, and that most people won't even visit their relatives' graves after they pass away. People won't really tr truly care about your accomplishments, and over time, they will eventually forget about them unless it benefits them in some way. But even then, they, they don't really pay attention to who did it. Uh, the current human life expectancy is 79 years. 79 years, and, and that's, that's, that's not a lot of time. So how will you spend it? What will you do with it? Once again, I ask, what is important I know, I know this may be hard to hear, but when it comes to this world, you're not important. You and I truly 
don't matter. Your opinions don't matter. You may think you do, but eventually your name goes in a large group of names of millions just like you, and, and just being honest, your bones will turn to dust just like everyone else's. Have you noticed that as technology progresses and the world becomes more and more advanced, everything else has begun to sped up, uh, has sped up too. As the world consumes more and more, it needs uh, things quicker, uh, faster. Its appetite gets bigger and bigger. And honestly, its depravity really knows no bounds. Um, every week, there is some new viral celebrity or situation, and it takes about a week, and they aren't relevant anymore. And the world uh, needs another thing to consume. People and celebrities fight for the limelight and are willing to do more and more extreme things to be noticed and to be relevant to the point in participating uh, in grotesque activities and satanic evil ideologies and even posting it for millions to see. They forgo all self-respect to the point they're willing to literally parade themselves naked, exposing the most intimate parts of their lives for the world to see and even, even willing to humiliate themselves just to get a second on the world stage. They will literally carve up their bodies to hide the fact that time is catching up to them. And much of the time, uh, these people our kids look up to. I think if we were honest, um, we've all bought into the lie that has been propagated by this world a little bit. But Genesis chapter three, um, verse 19, really explains this so well. It says, by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and dust you shall return. And Psalms 103, verses 15 and 16, as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. So I'm going to ask this question a lot this morning. What's important? Peter, the author of 1 Peter, is trying to explain this. Peter is telling his persecuted brothers and sisters what is important. You see, the world is offering these people, these persecuted people during Peter's time, nothing but sorrow and evil, and he is giving them exactly what they need. He is beautifully explaining the most important news that you and I will ever hear. And this is the news that you and I were ransomed from our evil ways, that we were ransomed from the fertile ways inherited from this world and our forefathers. You see, whenever Adam and Eve, they ate of that apple, our inheritance became sin. Us, a sinful, worthless people who were not worth, who are not worth the dust that we return to. We were ransomed from a sin that you and I could never overcome, that sin we used to love for those that have turned their life over to Jesus. And what did the creator of the universe do? What would he pay for us? What would he give for a worthless prize? Brothers and sisters, he gave the most precious and powerful thing to ever exist. It's not silver or gold or jewels, but he gave his very own son. God in flesh came to this earth and he suffered one of the most horrendous deaths known to man. And we're not even worthy to know his name, but for those of you that don't know, his name is Jesus Christ. He bought something worthless with something priceless. He bought you and me with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He is the lamb without blemish or spot. He never knew sin except ours when he was nailed to a tree and it was poured over him like an ocean. He took our sin because only he could do it. He hung naked and humiliated on a cross for all to see. The creator was literally mocked by his own creation. And with one word, he could have annihilated all of our existence, all of our ambitions, all of our trophies, all of our goals, and he could have everything. He could have annihilated everything, but he hung on that cross, and instead of annihilating us, he asked God Almighty to forgive us, and he hung there till he died. See, the Savior of mankind, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but he manifested himself in the last times for the sake of you and for me. And after he died on the cross, three days later, Christ rose again because the tomb and the grave cannot stop the Lord God Almighty. Nothing in the world could stop the Lord God Almighty. God raised Christ from the dead in all glory and power so that you and I could find salvation. 
and that our faith and hope are in God and not this world, that we would look to eternity and would chase Jesus and not ourselves. That is what Peter is saying in that passage. And that, church, that is important. That is everything. Time is not your friend. Time is coming for us all. Time will eventually erase you, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. I think of Rome. I think of Egypt, Greece, every big civilization that has come and gone. All of these great empires. I'm sure they all felt that their great cities would literally last forever. That when their, their rulers of these great cities, Tutmos III, Julius Caesar, when they looked out across their balconies, they thought, this is going to last forever. But I could take you to where they used to stand, and I could show you the rubble that once was these great empires. Now, hardly anything is left of them except a few monuments, pillars, and statues that honestly just really remind us how weak we really are. We are another one of these empires. We are living in another one of these empires. We think we will last, but one day everything around you will return back to the rubble. I know many of us want to leave an inheritance for our children. I know that it's important that we give them the best we have to offer, and, and I get it. I, too, want to leave something good for my kids. But much of the time, we focus on things that are just simply of no worth. We are so concerned with leaving our children uh, things that time will eventually just turn into dust. But how, about, how about church? How about we leave them with Jesus? How about, we, how about we show them the importance of Jesus? Because this world... This world is going to erase us, but for the rest of eternity, my Savior will know every hair on my head. He created me. He knows my name. He will not forget it. He knows you and I better than we know ourselves. God stands outside of time. Time does his will and not the other way around. And after every civilization has faded from the face of this planet, his name will continue and always ring out for eternity. Nothing can stop him. Every knee will bow to him. He is and always has been, and he will be. He always will be. And the crazy part of this story is he wants a relationship with you. So my question is, will you trade it for dust? Will you choose dirt over the Savior for what is important? Verse 18 says it so well, knowing that you were ransomed from the fertile ways inherited from our forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold. And what's ironic about that is that silver and gold doesn't perish. It doesn't even rust. What, what Peter's trying to say here is that what we even think will never perish will eventually fade away. But he, he paid for us for something that will never perish. God and the things of God are not perishable. Death cannot touch it, and time cannot fade it. And he offers it to you, but the biggest reward, church, that he offers is an eternity in his presence. Because he will know you for the rest of eternity, but he will know you as one of his eternal children or as rejected in eternal damnation. And I don't say that to scare you. That's just the truth. We have the opportunity to be a part of something eternal, something our minds cannot even fully comprehend because God, out of his grace and mercy, has offered us a chance to help his kingdom. He does not need us, but he chooses to let us be a part of it. And we have the opportunity to tell and share the gospel with those around us, with our loved ones, with our friends, and with our enemies. We get to be a part of the greatest story literally ever told. You and I are not the heroes of this story, but the hero has chosen to let us be a part of it and to be examples of his great grace and glory, to share in an inheritance that we don't deserve and never could earn. That means something. And nothing can take that away from those that repent and turn their lives over to Jesus. That, that is what you leave your family. Parents, that is what you leave your children. That is what you chase. Why should the Lord of the heavens and of the earth and of the, un of the universe concern himself with us? I don't know, but he did. So I ask again, what is important? 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transcended, but the things that are unseen are eternal. It's interesting how we hold success and victory. Uh, we usually do it by what the world recognizes, not by what God wants. Even when we do things for God, we will still judge the success off of uh, the worldly measurements. I think we will all be a little surprised when we get to heaven one day and realize that some of the greatest people to ever live in existence were missionaries that died in jungles that didn't have names. Men and women in third world countries that died because they didn't believe, they, they, didn't be, they decided to believe in Jesus over their lives. Martyrs that time has erased, but my Savior will never forget because they did not need this world nor its recognition. They did not need riches or gold. They needed Jesus Christ, and they literally gave everything for it. They understood that they are not worth one drop of the blood that was shed for them on the day of Calvary. One drop of that blood was not worth every precious thing in this universe. You could take all the armies of this world for all of time and all their weapons, and they cannot stand against one drop of that blood, but he poured it out for you and me because he loves you, and he is a good, good God. That love is unmeasurable. There is nothing like it. So why would we search for something else? Why am I telling you this this morning? Because I'm just being honest, we are blinded here, especially here in America. We are blinded by flashing lights, shiny things, titles, and just simply worthless dust. It's our biggest trap, and if we do not figure out what is important and what is not, it will have eternal consequences. It will play out in our children's lives. So, so my question, once again, is what is important? Is it Jesus or your goals? Is it Jesus or your riches and your money? Is it Jesus or your self-made heroes? Is it Jesus or your reputation? Is it Jesus or your life? You have to make a choice. You have to, because not making a choice is an answer in itself. Jesus should be first. It's not Jesus in the things I just listed. It's Jesus then the things I just listed. They can have these bones, but you can't take Jesus Christ from me. You can keep your dust. That should be the answer of every Christian. Because this is the only news. This is the news. This is the only news that is worth talking about, church. We will focus, will we focus this time on this earth, our 79 years, and studying the things of this world? Or will we be prepared for eternity? Because although 79 years is not measurable to eternity, it is instrumental on what happens in eternity. Do you understand that? 79 years is not measurable to eternity, but it is instrumental on what happens in eternity. God does not care if you can recite every lyric from a Taylor Swift song, singing, shake it off, shake it off, won't shake off hell's fires. God does not care if you, can, if you had a gold medal or not. God does not care if you made a billion dollars or not. God does not care if you left your children the biggest inheritance. God does not care if you built monuments or reached an amazing political status. He will only care if you know him and have a relationship with him and, he, and how you furthered his kingdom. Those are the things he cares about. And when I am laid in the ground, I only care that this world knows one thing about me. When they write my inscription on my tombstone, I don't need it to say great husband or good father or good law enforcement officer. You can put child of God and we can call it the end of the day. You can save your money. You don't even need to put my name. I see it all around me. I see profession Christians that are afraid of making a stand for the gospel. They are afraid to even post anything that could be controversial and point to the gospel. They are afraid to tell people literally the only news that is worth hearing. They are afraid to offend the world that literally hates them. It hates you. It does not care about you. You mean nothing to it. Eternal things mean nothing to the world. So why do you cater to it? Why do you care if you offend it? John chapter 15, verses 18 through 19. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. 
If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you were not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Literally, our Savior is telling us this. Newsflash, the world is controversial. The world is confrontational. And what's funny is the world has been taking its punches for a long time, and it's not holding back, and it's just going to continue to get worse. It wants a fight. Just look around you. Church, we are in a war currently. We are in a war, and the fight is literally on. It's nearly impossible to turn on a TV show or watch a movie or just walk out the door without being bombarded by filth, evil agendas, and hate. If it can't kill your kids in the womb, it'll try to mutilate them outside of it. And if it can't physically hurt them, it will try to mentally mutilate them and make them forget even to the point that they don't even know they're a boy or a girl anymore. I'll use, it'll use anything at its disposal. Temptation, divination, indoctrination, mutilation. It's evil does not have any boundaries. It will do whatever it takes. Really, really what it wants is it wants to erase anything of eternal value from your existence. The world is transparent about it. It is out for blood. Literally, it's out for blood. That's not figuratively. It's out for blood. Will your identity be a child of God? Or will it be the world that hates you? Because second news flash, Jesus was controversial. Jesus was confrontational. He looked, at, he looked evil in the eye and he crushed it. Christ wasn't afraid to speak up or confront this world. Jesus Christ wasn't ashamed to stand up for you. He wasn't ashamed to hang half naked on a cross for you. So are you ashamed of him? Second Timothy uh, chapter 11, verse 13, really explains this so well. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we have endured, we will also reign with him. And if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. That is the heart of Jesus Christ. And also remember Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, this world, against spiritual wickedness, and in high places. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. There's a lot of lost people out there, and they need Jesus just like us. One of the best things that ever happened to me um, that really helped put this into perspective for me was about two years ago... Uh, I was given a case to go uh, take a, a report from a retired law enforcement officer. Um, he'd been out of the game for about 15 or 20 years. And uh, when I showed up, um, he was in very, very poor health. He was in a wheelchair. And uh, really, really what, he, what he'd made the report for, he was just a very, very lonely man, very kind man, very, very lonely. He just wanted someone to come and talk to him. And when I, when I got inside his house and uh, he rolled his wheelchair, he took me by this wall. And I remember looking at this wall and he showed me all of these achievements. Um, it was very clear that this man had had a very, uh, a very good career in law enforcement. He had all types of medals, badges, awards. Uh, he, he, was a, he was a very big deal in his day. And what was ironic about it is I'd never even heard of him. I mean, he'd only been out of law enforcement for 15 years. I'd never even heard of this guy's name. After I took that report and talked with him for a while, um, about two months later, he passed away. And it really saddened me to see someone that had given all of their time to something that had already forgotten him before he even left this earth. You know, Solomon, Solomon really understood this. He is still considered one of the richest men to ever walk the planet. He literally had everything the world had to offer. God gave him more wisdom than any man alive or to come. And what does he say about this world? Um, he writes um, uh, basically a, a poem in Ecclesiastes, in chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Uh, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king of Jerusalem. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanities. What does man gain by the toil at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth 
remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes to the north and around and around goes the wind and it circuits, the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full to the place where the streams flow. There they flow again. All things are full of weariness. A man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which is said, see, this is new? It has been already in the ages before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of later things yet to be among those who come after. Solomon just explains how this world works. Here today, gone tomorrow, it's all vanity. I'm not saying that pursuing your goals and having hobbies and things you're passionate about is wrong. Use them for God. I'm not saying that being wise with money and successful and having nice things is wrong. We should be good stewards of the things that God has given, them, given us. But none of them should ever take the place of what is important. Choose Jesus, not this world. As I close this sermon out, I ask this. If you are here this morning and have lost focus of what is important, please do not lose heart. I really get it. It's hard. I get distracted every day by this world. I'm not telling you um, this sermon from a pedestal. Uh, I'm telling you I'm screaming it from the trenches, to be quite honest. We're about to enter into a time of praise and worship, and we're going to sing a song called If, if Everything Fells. And we've sang it here quite a few times before. Um, these are the lyrics of the songs. It says, so many things that are hidden, so many hearts you'll reveal. Each one will declare who you are. All of the people we've held up, all of the platforms we've built, they crumble beneath who you are. Kings and kingdoms will pass away, but you will still be standing, Lord. Honestly, it sounds like the, the perfect song to sing this morning. If God is convicting you this morning, um, I, I encourage you, if you want to, to use these altars. I, 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 my biggest thing I, I, I ask is that you just not wait. Please do not wait. Time um, is not your friend. We are not promised time. I watched a video the other day. Um, it was a DWI video. Um, a, a, a helicopter was following this car that was uh, going, dr driving through the city at a high rate of speed. And uh, as, the, as the helicopter followed the car, you knew that de disaster was going to play out. Um, there was a, a small car crossing an intersection, and literally on this live feed, uh, this truck plows into this car. Uh, it killed everyone in the car. Come to find out, it was a sweet family. Um, they were just literally just left their house 60 seconds ago, and it was done. And I, and I remember thinking to myself, wow, I'm sure when these people got inside this car and they went to go to this restaurant, they had no idea that they literally had two more minutes left on this earth. And that just really struck me. We are just in the church. And, I, and I, once again, I'm not saying this to scare you, but this is the reality. We are fragile. We are here today and gone tomorrow. And as I watched this, I just, I just thought these people just had no clue what was about to, to, to come. I, I look at Israel and some of the things that happened in Israel, people that were playing in parties as these terrorists invaded um, the, these cities. I, I, I don't think they had any clue what was about to happen. It was clear there was like, part, I saw a video, there was a party, a little kid's party. They thought that it was going to be another day, just normal. We are not promised tomorrow. Time is not your friend. It does not care about you. So please don't wait. Make Christ important. Make him important to your family. Please chase the eternal. Um, Brother Matt is going to come up here and close us out in prayer this morning. Worship team, if you'll please come up.